jingle all the way. Ooh, which one? Tennant? Whitaker? McCoy? Peter Cushing? We can't afford to wait for Irving Rusa later. We need Irving Rusa now. Music by Gene For Real, Connor's less successful cousin. Before being king of the lemurs, Julian made educational films. In almost any big city, the centers of medicine and surgery are big too. Okay, what's this city compensating for? The hospitals, designed to serve thousands at a time, are equipped with the most modern devices and staff specialists and expert technicians. All to get the billing done. But what of the small town? Yes, this small town, which looks exactly as developed as the big city. No imposing hospitals. No large labs for research. Modern beauty salon is not a great name for a business. In small towns, doctors like this one must serve all the health needs of the community. So just no lights in the waiting room, huh? The man who cares for these people can't specialize in one type of disease. He's lucky to recognize half a disease. The, rest of the long catalog of sicknesses to other physicians. In a way, though, the small town doctor is a specialist, too. A specialist in humanity. Because big city slickers are famously not humans. To doctors like Dr. John Wade of... They Ohio call West me West Dr. West Wade. I'm not a real doctor, but I am a real Wade. One of the rewards of his calling to watch some of the personalities develop from babyhood. That's an old baby. Some of his patients, in turn, have watched him grow and develop. From behind the bushes. Young and old, the people in this community are his friends as he is theirs. So this is what Katzenberg did before he met Eisner. That calendar hasn't been changed since 1899. The patients in Dr. Wade's office any morning are a town in miniature. Like Legoland. His services and his skill are at the disposal of rich and poor alike. What is this town in Ohio that had Medicare for all in the 50s? And every day, somebody injures themselves tripping on those stairs to the doctor's office. Mid-morning finds the doctor at one of the town schools. Today is inoculation day for the children of the first grade. Oh, remember when parents let their kids get vaccinated? Out smallpox in this area. Inoculations against diphtheria have sharply decreased the dangers of epidemics, which once carried off thousands of children every year in this region. Uh, I'm allergic to that. Unimpressed children are most susceptible to disease. The dermic needle means safety for these little boys and girls. And they can believe the doctor when he says it doesn't hurt a bit. Yeah, the kids definitely Although believe that. Dr. Wade's name may never appear in medical journals. He and others like him make their contribution to preventive medicine day after day. They are the link between the research laboratory and the people. Because the research laboratory and the people are not on speaking terms. What's with the Handmaid's Tale extras? ...progress in his profession and passes his knowledge on to others. Once a week, his crowded schedule crams in a visit to the hospital in a nearby city for consultation. Because the small town has just one doctor, but the city has none? ...is explaining the use of penicillin, a drug which prevents or halts infection in a matter of hours. And that wraps up his meeting with the Society of Mary Wicks Impersonators. So the doctor sprayed penicillin on the children through the sprinkler. The doctor's three children and their friends greet his return in the early afternoon as a big event. Crap, Dad's home. Hide the contraband. One day I'll learn which three of these kids are mine. Lunchtime gives the doctor a short rest and a chance to talk over the morning's happenings with his wife. Oh yeah, back when healthcare workers got lunch breaks. Well, the wife knows more about making a sandwich than the characters in Let's Make a Sandwich. Mrs. Wade, a former graduate nurse, is a great help to her husband. The office is understaffed with nurses, but it's much more important that she cook his lunch. ...and can give instructions on what to do until he arrives. Today, Mrs. Wade knows the doctor can finish his lunch before answering the latest call. Inhale that food and start running. The doctor takes his own advice about eating... Yeah, voyeur cam! After meals. 
Sorry I'm late for the open heart surgery. My wife reminded me to eat slowly. After his brief luncheon recess, Dr. Wade answers a call from a Bennett farm a few miles out of town. House calls in this economy? It's important we watch every step he takes so we really understand. Mrs. Bennett thought her husband had had a heart attack. And the Bennetts will both feel better once their daughters are married off to Mr. Bingley and Mr. Darcy. kept him absolutely still as Mrs. Wade advised until the doctor came to examine him. Tom Bennett has been doing the work of three men lately. Oh, he was taking care of that baby we saw earlier. In the Midwestern summer heat, it's no wonder even a strong young man like Tom suddenly found the work too heavy. Hmm, a doctor and something being heavy. Wish I could think of a joke for that. Yeah, a thermometer will tell you if you've had a heart attack. No sound is coming out of Dr. Wade's mouth, so Tom has no idea what's happening. On the farm until Tom gets better. I don't know how to say this, Tom, but you're pregnant. A good rest, and Tom will be up and about again in no time. How can he hear anything through the stethoscope if he's talking at the There's same time? Worry about. It's just overexertion. And no doctor has ever been wrong about that. The doctor's next call brought him to Imperceptible Contrast Avenue. After the visits to new patients, there are follow-up calls to be made. At the Haunted Mansion. Mary Sawyer is the first case on the checkup list today. We think she's been reading at the library, Doctor. She still hasn't gotten over a long bout with the flu. Here, let me crack open a glow stick. Please tell me he washed that. The new sulfa drugs brought her fever down, but they left her weak and listless. I wouldn't know what it's like to be listless because I can always list things while my name begins with a D. Okay, is every man in this town Slugworth? Okay, now where's the headphone jack? I don't remember the exorcist being this slow. Without their knowing it, Dr. Wade treats Mary's parents almost like patients themselves. I mean, he's the only doctor in town, so they are actually his patients too. All right. And the doctor has found that it's a good idea to keep anxious relatives busy with instructions for the care of their patient so they'll have less time for worry. Yes, an endless string of tasks to get done certainly reduces stress. The doctor has a black car so that if things don't go well, it can double as a hearse. Next, the doctor stops in to see the Clark family. Clark's family? Martha and Jonathan? Wait, no, they don't exist in these riffs. The living with the land boats are always floating by this house. They had a product placement deal with this house and they get more money the longer we linger on it. They don't suspect that this is a professional visit to check on Mrs. Clark's heart condition. Her family has had a history of broken hearts since Grandma Padme. So Dr. Wade lets them think it's just a social call. He's fooled them into thinking they have a friend, but nobody cares about them non-professionally. So it goes for the rest of the doctor's long day. Dr. Wade reaches home just in time to play with his daughters a bit before bedtime. The doctor only has time to read the novelizations of creepy Richard Williams movies. Sometimes he sees more of other people's children than of his own. As far as he knows. He tries always to be there when they say their prayers at night. After all, the prayer is what they're living on, and they've got to hold on to what they've got. Most children forget to do the dance moves to their bedtime prayers. Good night, Daddy. This five-minute bedtime visit will surely stave off all the resentment towards you that's been steadily growing inside us. Dr. Nosferatu. Okay, either she's a mime or she just escaped prison. Usually his wife has to take care of most of their social obligations. In fact, his wife should just do all the socialization and he can hole up in his room. Boy, it was really hard to watch movies before projectors were invented. Yeah, yeah, this is what porn was like then. Last year, Dr. Wade managed to get away for a week with his family and some friends. They took movies and never tire of running them. But their friends sure tire of watching them. 
Hey, Dad, before you start the movie, I can't open my tin of chewing tobacco. Here, we'll show you my colonoscopy. This is the hideout where the doctor escapes as often as he can. It has no telephone on doctor's order. Hey, if you're ever going to be unreachable by phone, could this town get a second doctor? The doctor's favorite pastime is hitting big sticks against bigger sticks. Just out of frame, Frankenstein's monster is tossing a child into the water. Someone was jealous of Superman's ass shot in the circus cartoon. Perhaps the film technique won't win any prizes. Oh, you're one to judge. Revive pleasant memories. And even a reminder of a vacation is relaxing when holidays are rare. But what about a reminder of the vacation you need from this vacation? Mrs. Wade feels it's high time the doctor took another day off. So we can put that overexertion diagnosis to the test. To get away from home. Well, now this just turned into how to go places. This a delightful idea. You heard it here, kids. Escaping solves all your problems. That driver almost caused him to become a patient himself. Sometimes ideas don't work as they're intended to. Just when the Bennets and the Sawyers and the Clarks and all the others can spare Dr. Wade for a day, someone else seems to need him badly. It's my 180 degree rule, Doc. I think it's broken. The outing will have to be put off until another day. The surgeon at the hospital where Dr. Wade is a consultant needs immediate help in an emergency operation. The surgery is an emergency, but they have time to go track down this random town doctor on his day off. And this led to the Hudson Hornets crash. I swear he has different children in every shot. This isn't the first holiday that's been spoiled. Tough luck for the family, but good luck for the patient on the operating table. So this is turning into a 90s family film about a dad who works too much. This is an extra depressing episode of M.A.S.H. Oh, remember when people in hospitals wore masks? No one but this doctor could assist with this surgery. Just ignore all these nurses. This is the moment when all the doctor's skill and training are called forth. When one unsure move might mean the patient's death, but the surest of moves can guarantee only another chance at life. So it's real smart to go with the burned out guy who's desperate for a vacation to do this surgery. Once, long ago, 10 years, 15, 150 this very night. Knows. How did it go? Whatsoever house you shall enter, it shall be for the good of the sick to the utmost of your power. You know, if you feel like it. When he resolved to live by that code, John Wade became what he is today. Doctor of medicine. Servant of humanity. To serve humanity! It's a cookbook! Dr. Wade was sued for malpractice and lost his license the next month. Well, that's the story of the only doctor in America, I guess. Thank you, one doctor, for having to do everything for everybody everywhere at the expense of your family's happiness. Fortunately, in riffing this short, I had a better support staff than any of the hospitals in Ohio apparently do. I had my patrons who joined me for some live streams, pointing out joke opportunities and making observations I might have missed otherwise. I had to ruin all their vacations to get them to help me, but... You know, some things are just emergencies. If you would like to join the next Patreon livestream, even a $1 pledge will get you access. And at $2, you can see next week's video and Armchair Imagineering. It's been a while since I've done one of those, but cut me some slack. Whenever I try to start one, just patients keep coming up to me and asking me to perform emergency surgery. Anyway, the subject of this Armchair Imagineering is a certain superhero whose day was apparently yesterday. And had I known that when I was scheduling this month, I could have planned that out better. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have health insurance crap to deal with. That's not a joke. That's actually what I have to do today. It's not quite as easy from this end in this century. But until next time, this is Dave, signing off.